Welcome to another episode of the Tower 26 B Race Ray Podcast. I'm Jim Blitzky here once again with Coach Jerry Rodriguez. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm good, Jim. How are you? I am outstanding, Jerry. We have, this is a new horizons in the Tower 26 B Race Ray Podcast world. It is our first video podcast. Audio, we'll have audio as well, but now along with your buttery voice, buttery toned voice, you'll have my steamy, my steamy glare that our listeners can tune into weekly or bi-weekly, monthly, whenever we decide to record, to, to see our beautiful faces staring back at them. Well, you're going to become a, a bigger international celebrity. Is that possible? I'm not, I'm not sure if that is possible, Jer. Probably not. You're right. Well, here's the thing. We, we have these listeners, Bahrain, China, Philippines, Qatar, Qatar. How do you say that? Qatar. Qatar. Yeah. Cotter, Russia, Guernsey, Taiwan, Brazil, Australia, Thailand. These are these are all countries that are moving up fast in the list. So now they're actually seeing our faces. Well, you are uh, actually coaching one of those guys from Guernsey now. At least one. I mean, I think. Yeah. I mean, how many people are we coaching now around the world? We have you know hundreds of thousands of athletes we're coaching on our subscription program, coaching.tower26.com. You can go to and sign up as well. And now you can see my eyes and buy into it that much more so, right? I, I, I call myself more of a used car salesman than an on-air personality. All right, boss. You, oh, we want to move on? Well, is that what you're getting at it's here? It's your show, my man. So what is, let's, let's talk about this. What is the video podcast going to open up to the world of viewers besides seeing our faces? You know, it's interesting. First, we have to start off and I think thank the complete most obsessed triathlete there is. And that would be Christoph. I mean, Christoph, who has written our software program, as you know, for our... Uh, our remote plan is the one, the, the brainchild behind all of this and who's sitting, you know, taking care of, of business right now, making sure this is getting recorded. So, Christoph, I want to say thank you very, very much for making this happen. This is the transition from, remember, we talked about a few episodes. You know what? You threw it out there. You, you caught me by surprise. You said, hey, you know, we might, we're thinking about closing down the show, but we're moving to the video platform is what you were getting at. I assume you didn't you didn't really mean closing down the show and I'm speaking for you. Well, yes. And, and Christoph and I in the background were talking about this, but I didn't know this would come about this quickly. And now here we are. Here we are. So as you see, we have a video screen here. We're going to put up put up examples of things of subjects we talk about. Maybe we even put a picture up there of a swimmer or two that we're proud of from a, a race, maybe race results. There's a whole plethora of things we can do technique wise. We'll get into technique very shortly because there's a point that I want to make about technique, but technique wise, you can show what you're speaking about. And I think major, major benefits to well, we, the, we to can the do watch some viewers. Pretty, yeah, some pretty significant instructional things um, that were more difficult to do over audio because you're unable to really get down to the fine nuance of you can't show anything on audio but now we can actually show like we have in our videos for our subscribers we can go through and slow things down and point them out and highlight them and so on so i think it's gonna be fantastic it is going to be fantastic but you know what we're going to be that much more entertaining to our masses because you not only have the voices now you have the looks amazing Let's but hey it. so we broke down the top 10 episodes that our listeners have tuned into over the how long have we been on there now two and a half years a little the over two years top 10 episodes the number one episodes obviously the episode number one where we intro to the show and speak about the show the episode the second most listened to is technique building a foundation talk, speaking about talk hotness yes the third most listened to is the essential ingredients to becoming a better triathlon swimmer then you go down to the fourth most is episode 33 open water optimization let's just jump through it here there's a lot of technique in the top 10 well as you go through the top 10 we've got one two three four five six seven of the top 10 most listened to episodes are technical related mm-hmm. that's telling us something mm-hmm. and, and you can't forget rachel mcbride obviously Ma- she was rachel a very entertaining episode Rachel, hello to you there. You've uh, you've made it into the top ten, which was podcast number thirty six. Yeah. So you got to consider that podcast has come way into the line of our, um, you know, the deliveries that we've done, mm-hmm. and her uh, that uh, interview with her made it into the top ten. So technique is a huge thing. Our listeners the main thing. want to learn about technique. The least listened to episode, episode number forty three. Be present, which is the key to your swim improvement. Why do you think this is the case? Why is being present? I least listen to episode. It's interesting, huh? It is uh, so interesting. I'm uncertain. I think maybe the title is not sexy enough and wasn't able to draw in um, people to listen to it. Mm-hmm. But I think the content of that episode, as a coach, 
that would be one of my top five key points in um, you know encouraging athletes mm -hmm. to when they're involved in all workouts being fully present emptying the mind of uh, anything non-related to what they're doing at that moment and we went into we sort of dived into the um, you know the roots of that in that episode At least listen to one and I think that being coached myself I think I don't think there's a day that goes by where I don't speak about being present in the training that an athlete is conducting so it's very important but maybe we have to sexy sexy that title up a little bit and you being a former magazine publisher i know you always have the key to success when it comes yeah. to titles so uh so let's change that title and get these these listeners tune in to that one but an episode that's doing really well is with phil dr phil golia the nutrition expert and i know that's another topic that i go off on daily with athletes and i think a lot of people want to tune into that so we see that thing moving up the ranks pretty quick we should and he was episode what was that episode number 37 yeah and he's quickly approaching the top 10 and um what that tells me is we probably need to see if he'd be interested in coming back on again because phil on the video waves uh, uh, that guy's a ham he would be on here in a second well he would and he's on a lot of uh, celebrity tv oh yeah thoughts. he's always uh talking about his success with the kardashians and this okay. and that and uh so yeah let's see if phil can get in here give us some more educational tips regarding nutrition but last show let's get into that what did we speak about last show well we were fortunate enough to have mark spitz on you know 1972 uh seven olympic gold medals seven world records and uh we had mark talk about the success obviously of his olympic games but there was a period at, at those games where he did not want to swim one of the events, and that was the 100 meter freestyle, sort of the marquee event in swimming. And there were a number of reasons why he didn't want to, and, and the big one being uh, there's a possibility he wouldn't win, and that may break his streak of, of winning. And he didn't want to do it. And we, we dove into what happened, how long it took him to you know, turn to the other side. You know, the boogeyman sort of got a hold of him. And then how he came out on the other side, and most folks don't know the story, but you know the outcome. The outcome is seven, seven swims, seven Olympic uh, gold medals, seven world records. So the sort of the the mental portion of that I think is really important, which is what we emphasize in that podcast. And talk about a voice for the audio, the airwaves. That guy has got a voice. I listened to it two or three times already. I can't get enough. To listen to Mark. He's a great storyteller, isn't he? Uh, the amount that I had to... See, with the video podcast, we can't edit anything out. Right. I had to edit a little bit out for time's sake. Otherwise, we would, we would have had a three-hour long podcast. Well, we had a long... Yes, it was long. I had a lot of stories in there, but he's terrific. There was it. some stuff on the cutting room floor we can, we can use as B-roll when we give the greatest hits or something like that. You know, By the way, he did call over the weekend and uh, ask for your phone number, so he needs some information from you. He probably wants tips on my technique, my swim technique. Why not, you know? What are we going to talk about today? Well, I want to... Um, you know, we promised we uh, in the last uh, podcast to have a couple of guests, which we decided not to for this one because since we're doing the first audio, uh, uh, sorry, first video uh, cast, let's get the kinks out before we bring some folks mm -hmm. on. So I wanted to just go through a few, you know, two or three shorter topics that I think are important that um, that comes up at our workouts and also comes up in our plan. So uh, importantly. The phase that we're in right now which is our skill building phase open water skill building we want to talk about training versus exercise mm -hmm. during stressful times and then uh, we'll go through our 1k and 100 results a little bit and then if we have time let's get into training days a normal day versus a uh, exceptional training day versus some crappy training days which occurs in the life of uh, every athlete let's get keep moving forward right yeah. so let's um we yeah we also wanted to get our project athletes onto this show as well our new project athletes that we're gonna bring on board but obviously like you said we won't work the kinks out and that'll be down the road we'll do that in a couple of weeks or something well and jamie who we need to update on um I didn't have this her stats available and also jamie unfortunately has been ill for a couple of weeks and was i had vacation for two or three weeks prior so her last four of her last six weeks of uh training has been severely interrupted so we can only go up from here we're gonna look like extra special people not the way but we're gonna have four people at this table that'd be a full house it's gonna be a full exactly. we'll have call-ins it'd be amazing you guys people have no idea what you're in for it's gonna be great we had our hair and makeup done by Christelle Balestra before the show. She took care of us, makes make us look pretty. 
What are we about? Let's get on to the first topic of today, the most important phase, open water skill well, building. Well, we're in the most important phase, what I consider. So we run five phases, as you know, Jim, in our, um, our training plan. And this particular phase, although it's not a long phase, it's only about six weeks, I would consider this to be the most important phase within our plan because it goes through, uh, I believe it was episode uh, three or four, where we talked about the four essential ingredients to becoming a better triathlete improving your technique, um, having the right training volume, making sure the prescription of the workout, the types of workouts that you do are, um, are essential for your improvement. And then of course, accountability. Those four things all come into this episode uh, to, or into this um, phase, this of, training, phase yep. of training together with open water skill building, which mm -hmm. are all the variables that we need for racing. So that would be sighting, deck ups, change of speed, takeout speed, change of gears, all every single component that we need to develop and the skills that we need to develop for your open water uh, segment of your of your triathlon, that those skills are taught in this phase, coupled with all the four the vari variables. So this is the only phase that has them all. Most important phase, I would say. And you find that the, the athletes that are completing these workouts, both in our local program and the program that we, the subscription program coaching that tower26.com that we offer to athletes all around the world. We're integrating parts of training in the swim that they have never performed before from deck ups to running around the pool to diving in at the start of each interval to even sighting. You know, you think that a triathlete would want to work on their sighting, but the amount of athletes that we have reporting back to us saying, Oh, I've never practiced sighting in the pool before, or I've never really known how to sight. I just stick my head up. So this is such a vital phase. Of and training. especially the frequency of sighting that we have introduced into these sessions. It's not just sight in the warm up or sight in the warm down to just sort of touch on the skill. It's it fully integrated into the main swim sets. As, as you well know, I mean, if you're doing 200s or 100s, it's two or three sites per 25. So mm -hmm. it's a high frequency of sighting. And the challenge has become, just uh, and, and and you've had this in some of uh, in some of the questions in our comment section, and and for our audience that's um, that's viewing this, when you introduce all of these variables, remember we did a, a, a podcast um, uh, several episodes ago on um, adaptation. Adaptation takes time, so when you introduce one element, it, it's going to take about ten times, which could be about three weeks. We've introduced five elements in the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. So we got to have a little bit of patience here because we're doing multiple, uh, introducing multiple skills simultaneously or in a short period of time. So it is going to take six to eight weeks for these to be to, for full adaptation to occur. And then you're fully into your racing phase. Mm -hmm. And that's when it's just a matter of reaping the rewards of all the work that's been done. And we're going to get to the sighting, back to the sighting in a second. But another thing that we're practicing that many of the, these athletes have never practiced is pace line. Getting on the feet of getting on the feet of a swimmer in front of you that might be a little bit faster, and just getting comfortable in that position. That's something we now we practice at every workout. We integrate, you know, we've slowly built into it, but now we're to the pace to the place where we've added pace lining. And if you haven't practiced pace lining, grab some friends and go to the pool and practice pace lining because it's a very uncomfortable feeling. But you find the more we do it, the more comfortable you get. I remember the first year that we were practicing this, I would, I would dread getting to the workouts because we do pace lining because you didn't know if you could keep up. You didn't know if you get on the feet. You don't know if you're going too slow when you're at the front. Now, you know, four years in, I look forward to every workout getting the pace line. It kind of makes it a team workout. Well, also, a lot of this, as you know, is becoming uh, familiar with the discomfort of it. Oh, yeah. And many things, once they're new, were just unfamiliar. So therefore, there's a little bit of uh, apprehension, perhaps, right? And um, with the high frequency that we do these, it becomes second nature to you. Yeah. But you have to practice it multiple times a week. Another thing that you're stressing in our warm-ups mainly is a lot of core strength, a lot of you know, butterfly kicking, a lot of kicking, a lot of stuff where we're working that core strength. What does that do? Why does that vital to open water? Well, open water is highly dynamic. And because of that, we're, we're going to need more core strength. Someone's going to say, well, why are you doing butterfly kicking? This is not competitive swimming. You don't need to swim butterfly or backstroke or breaststroke. Understood. But butterfly kicking gets literally to the core of the core. Mm -hmm. And that is concentrated um, use of... Uh, you know, of your lower stomach and, yeah, uh, yeah. and upper stomach muscles, which are needed to hold good body posture, especially in a dynamic environment relative to the pool. So because the racing is in open water, 
we need to develop the core more. Mm -hmm. We also need to have more power. Uh, you don't have the nice, fat, juicy lane lines, the 50 meter or 25 uh, yard pool or 25 meter pool. You've got a big body of open water, highly dynamic with lots of folks in it. So we mm -hmm. need to do the things to build out specific muscle endurance and strength and build a core up. Yep. This is the time of the season because we're now in, moving into the race phase. And you see a lot of athletes, especially when they put on the wetsuit, they forget that their core is even there. They just let the wetsuit take all the buoyancy, they lose all their tautness. So now by what we're doing is integrating that core work and you know that tautness into their swimming day in and day out, yeah. they can better relate that when they put the wetsuit on. This phase is a, I mean, a massive injection of multiple ingredients. Mm -hmm. And if, the, if there's a time to join our plan, if, yeah. if you only had three months to commit to swimming, this is the time to do it. Although I hate to sort of, you know, position our plan that way because I look at this more of a, a macro year long type mm -hmm. thing. But if you only had three months, these are the three months. So what would be the most interesting set, you, uh, most interesting interval that you could design? So first you dive in race, takeout speed and a pace line sighting three times every 25, right? At the end of, 50 you deck up you run around the bleachers you go for a little 10 second run you dive back in i think that's integrating everything into one interval right dive well, in race uh, takeout speed pace line sighting and the other variable would be to have somebody um dive in right behind you yeah so they would draft okay mm -hmm. and then if you did the deck up at the end and climbed out, then you could have them go ahead of you. They would dive in, you'd go behind them. So then you get to draft while they're leading out. Yeah. So you switch off, so you add another variable in there. So we, we added lots of variables into into the mosaic of the main mm -hmm. set. And it sounds overwhelming, but once, like the way you've built them in and, and integrate them in, into the set weekly, by the time you get to, you know, fourth or fifth element being added in, everything else is second nature. So it's not really that much. Well, six weeks in, which this is about the length of this phase, the adaptation will occur mm -hmm. uh, as you saw in the comments section many folks were you know stating oh, yeah. this is a little bit difficult yeah. but they've done it once or twice mm -hmm. you need to do it about 10 times which is about three weeks right and yeah, yeah and it makes swimming fun I mean, it makes it really fun it's not just cranking out lap after lap it makes it and i hear that time and time again like this is a really fun set because of everything you've added into yeah. it so that's what this phase is it's the most important phase of uh of the season and i wanted to make sure we sort of touched on that and mm -hmm. so something that we could show on our video podcast is how to correctly cite i don't know yes. if we want to do that right now but we could show the viewers how how is the right way to cite do you want to show the viewers well, do we want to do that well we can do that better yet why don't we get the video that we've uh we've created for it and in the next episode we put it up on the we put it up i feel like the weatherman or something like that <laughs> Yeah, put it up and then we go through and we could slow it down. We can actually do it in uh, in almost tenth of a second mm -hmm. increments and gotcha. really slow it down and sh show all the elements that go into sighting. Gotcha. Because there are different sighting styles oh, as we're seeing in the comment section. Yeah. And folks are sort of stuck on the water polo style or the alligator eyes and all these things that really yeah. are not. We important. had an interesting comment. Sorry to cut you off, but from an athlete who's blind in one eye yes. and he has to change up the way he did it and i knew that i know that we're the way we are we teach the way we want it to be done but that's an interesting that's interesting too we might have to cover that not sure how we're going to do that might you have to watch him swim comment to that i read one comment but i don't know if you replied again yeah so it's interesting maybe yeah. we'll have to bring him on the show or something because it's uh it was interesting one eye you might have to make some modifications right but uh but then we want to get into training versus exercise during st stressful times you know, you know what's the difference well I think we need to relate this to life. You know, as, as a triathlete, you get very focused and the sport draws in a certain type of personality, right? That very driven, A-type personality and very results oriented. But then life gets in the way at times. Uh, example, it could be f like my wife, Elizabeth. It was tax time and she's a tax accountant. Well, what do you think happens at tax time for this two months leading up? Uh, no sleep work 24 7 i know it yeah six seven days a week of work early mornings home at 10 o'clock at night time what happens to training at that time significantly reduced uh let's take a a, a lawyer that's uh, in a trial an investment banker that's doing an ipo or or doing a, a m a emergent merger and acquisition type uh, in in the middle of it you're, you so many hours are being devoted to your job um a family crisis uh, uh, a, a 
terrible sickness in a family, a death of a family member, something very, very emotional and mm -hmm. significant. That extracts a lot of your time and a lot of your emotional investment mm -hmm. that you can't put in to your sport, or, nor, the, nor should you. So we have to be able to lens shift, change from thinking I'm in training mode that I just need to get some exercise. So related, related specifically to the swim here, the person that swims three times a week that's in our plan, that's doing two A sessions and a B session as an example, maybe they can only swim twice a week. And maybe it's only 45 minutes. Yeah. So we try not to think we have to accomplish the whole menu. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have to recognize, we have to look at this as exercise because we don't want training to create an additional stress. We want the training, in this case, exercise. I'm going to swim just for stress relief. I want it to help my situation rather than create an additional load on, on, on the system. So like my wife, for instance, you get all, I'm going to miss the workout. Don't worry about it. Sleep in. You went to bed at 1130 last night. Sleep in. Come on the weekend. Get a 45 minute or a one hour session. And so I think it's important to recognize when you're in training mode, and when you have to, because of the demands of life at times, be able to pull back and switch to exercise. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point to make because you hear so much, you hear some athletes say, oh, I have to train today. I have to train. I have to get up at 4 a.m. to train so I can take my kid to school and then go to work all day and then come home, get my kid, go to Cub Scouts or whatever, like baseball games. And then I have to train at night again. Whereas... You're right. You know, get in there, get as much as you can in 30 minutes to be that outlet as and you, opposed to having to do it. And you it. sort of start beating yourself up a little bit because you don't hit your workout times. Example, whatever your time may be, 10 100s, and you normally swim at 130 pace. Well, at this, while this is occurring in life, you can't hit the 130 mm -hmm. pace. You're going to hit. In fact, it, the times don't even matter. Yeah. This is where you need to complete do a lens shift and mm -hmm. move away from performance and get down to, I just need to use my swimming or biking or running as therapy. That's it. Gotcha. Very, I'm going to end it at that. That's a very good point because yeah. you have too many athletes who stress themselves out over getting every single workout in, especially in this type A sport, right? That's what I'm going to do with our papers from now on. I'm done with them. I'm just going to check Toss them out. Just crump them we're, up we're and throw them. We're sort of old school here with paper versus computer, huh? I like it. I like it. We keep it real. That's what I say. Um, we have a lot of success on our 1K time trials that we just did, uh, when was that, three weeks ago? We did that, uh, yeah, about three or four weeks ago. So our athletes, both our local athletes as well as our subscription plan athletes, coaching.tower26.com. Hey, Christoph, we have that awesome graphic you could put on, on the uh, screen, right? Coaching.tower26.com. So I'll point down to it, see the graphic. <laughs> Christoph has been working hard on this graphic. So coaching at tower26.com, we have these athletes have taken, they, back in February, they did their initial 1,000 time trial and then their 100 time trial. And then we redid the test, what was it a third week in April? We did redid the test to see their improvements over time, or we didn't really have any lack there of improvement, but if they had a lack of improvement, um, to see what they did in those two, three months since the initial time trial. Right. So we had a 13 week training uh, phase, okay. which is our uh, the second phase of our five phases. And that's our what we call our foundational phase, which is really where we do sort of the ramp up of training, right? Lay down the, a little bit more volume and obviously some intensity. And then we measure again at the end of that uh, phase to, to see what the improvements are like. Mm -hmm. And the importance of doing that, there's some folks who don't like doing time trials because you have to lay yourself on the line. But the value of doing it, from my perspective, if you're not improving and you've really committed, meaning you've shown up to all the workouts, you've done what the coach has asked for, and you do get sleep and your nutrition is in play, if you haven't improved, we need to be fired. Mm -hmm. It means we haven't done our job well enough. Right. And it's a real way of measuring how we're doing, importantly, so the athlete can make a change and get new coaching. Mm -hmm. And that's a big, big reason. And then for the athlete, it's also to measure their responsiveness to the plan that they're on. And we had some, I mean, some massive gains from, you know, four minutes all the way down to, you know, 10 seconds or whatever. But we had some massive gains throughout. So do you well, want to go through that a little well, bit? Well, there are a few folks that, I mean, let's take Ken. How, how would you say this, Jim? I'm going to let you... Boutlier, Boutlier. Yes. Boutlier. My close, my close, so, Christophe. All of these, by the way, uh, are 
these improvements are done within the last three or four months, this year, 2018, mm -hmm. can improve from 22 minutes and 14 seconds in his 1K to 1818. It's almost four minutes. I mean, pretty massive, massive improvement. Four minutes yeah. is huge. Uh, look at Colin. Colin is three minutes and 37 seconds from 2155 to 1818. Uh, Christian, who I, uh, I have started, I don't think you have it there in yours, but Christian had a two minute improvement. And what was really significant about Christian's improvement, uh, Burkadal, is that Christian was 1711 to 1505. Three minute improvements, four minute improvements, those are doable when you're at 22 minutes and so on, similar to can and Colin, but when you start coming on to 17 minutes and 16 minutes, you get into you start moving up to the pointy end, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, these types of improvements are huge. Uh, Cyril uh, Russell Harris from 1703 to 1531 did that in 121 days. So it was about four months for him. Karen Perkins, who's one of our members, that's yep. also on our plan here. Karen went from 1939 to uh, 1807, so a minute and 32 seconds. Oh yeah, she was swimming yesterday. I was just astounded with how far yeah. she's come in such a short amount of time. So we need to have her on to interview her because yeah. Karen is the one who joined last year and she joined as a non-athlete, uh, non non-swimmer, uh, non-triathlete mm -hmm. and joined simply because she was turning 60 yep. and wanted to, and now she's Oh, bought, she's hooked. She's bought a yeah. bike. And yeah, oh, she's yeah. doing triathlon. Oh, she's killing it on our bike trainer workouts on Tuesday nights. And for all of you out there, if you're ever in town, you want to come to the bike trainer workout, we have our Tower 26 bike trainer workouts on Tuesday nights. Yes, there's another sure plug do. performance bike in Santa Monica. And track workouts also. No, Friday morning track workouts. We're doing it all here, Jer. This is the train, the triathlon training hub of the world now. You realize this. Of and course. It's because of A and B in no specific order, right? Go ahead. We got more results to go over here, right? But we have a few. Uh, well, we got pages of this stuff. There's a lot. Well, look at the top of the next page. Andrew Talansky, our pro cyclist that we had on um, three or four episodes yeah, ago with yeah. his coach, Jesse Moore. I mean, Andrew just started our plan uh, about three months ago. He had a 35-second improvement in his 1K, which he started off at close to 13 minutes. He went uh, 12.24. Now, that may not seem like a big improvement. But that's actually three seconds per hundred, right? Mm -hmm. Three and a half seconds yeah. per one hundred. Like you said, when you get closer to that pointy end, that's harder to make those gains. Big, big, big improvement. Jesse Moore, his coach, improved 32 seconds from 14 minutes to uh, 13.28. And uh, look down the list. You see Ryan's name down there, Ryan Earthman. Really, really proud of Ryan. Ryan is our student, uh, high school student, mm. that's made these massive improvements. Um, and I don't have his starting point. I wish I had that from when he started with us last year. I want to say he was closer to 15 minutes for his 1K. Um, this time he went 12.07. Wow. Okay. Um, but that's from last year. Yeah. But 12.07, which is very, very fast. I mean, he's, he's done real. And he broke a minute in his 100 freestyle. Wow. That's so, his uh, young whooper snapper. He's yeah, moving. Doing really, really well. He's on the uh, and then development of course, team. Uh, in the 100 freestyle, we had improvements all the way from 3 or 4 seconds per 100 all the way up to 24 seconds was the biggest 100 improvement uh, on the plan. Yeah. And that's well, a big drop. I forget who it was. Somebody wrote me and said, oh, yeah, I had this. This was my original time. This is my end time. And I said, oh, great, two minutes, whatever. And then he wrote back, his, oh, not a big deal, but it was three minutes. So the gains are so large, I couldn't even do, well, I can't do math as it is, but I couldn't even do the math. So Well, they've put the time in, uh, you know, Special K, uh, Kazume. That's yeah, Kazume, us. yeah. 206, 207 when she started off last year in December. Mm -hmm. She went 139. Wow. Uh, three weeks, four weeks ago. She went around the Boston Marathon also, by the way. Animal. So, She's doing yeah. it all, these people. Yeah. All over the place. So could we talk a little bit about um, training days? Yeah. And sort of the cycle that an athlete goes through within, let's frame it out over a month, if we picked a month time frame. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed this in our comment section? Because the athletes comment in uh, and um, that there's some folks who have days that are challenging. Their workouts weren't great. There are other days that they have great workouts and they have days that are sort of sort of in line with their regular workout performance. Mm -hmm. You've seen that. Oh, right? yeah, of course. What, what it seems like is most folks want to. We all want to have great days, great workout days. And the reality is most training days are what I call normal days. Mm -hmm. That's something Elizabeth taught me, actually. Most days are ordinary days. And we have, so if we took a 30-day training period of time, most of those days are going to be 
ordinary training days. It's going to be nothing special to them. They're going to fall within the realm of what our typical performance would be for training. Then we're going to have a few extraordinary days where we're going to have outstanding training performances. And then we're going to have some crappy days mm -hmm. where we fall way below the line and the negative wolf sort of gets a hold oh, yeah. of us for a bit. And we have to recognize, especially when those bad days occur, which Mark Spitz talked about in the prior episode, right? When those days occur, everybody gets them. Here was the nine-time Olympic gold medalist because he won two gold medals in 68 also. Here's a nine-time Olympic gold medalist getting, you know, w with the bad wolf getting a mm -hmm. hold of him at the 1972 Olympics. After winning, he'd already won five Olympic gold medals and broke five world records. And the bad wolf still got a hold of him. So when we have these negative days, it's important to recognize they're normal. And we just sort of check them off and go, you know what? Glad it's behind me because I know a whole bunch of ordinary days are coming and I know there are going to be a few extraordinary mm -hmm. days to happen. But it's important to recognize it's part of the cycle and yep. not to beat yourself up. Oh, and I see it all the time. There's one specific athlete yesterday who I almost had the kick back in the pool. She was getting so upset at her performance. And I said, it's just another day. Like, it's just a day of training. You're going to get out of the pool, forget about it when it's over. But before then, you're not getting out. You're not getting so upset over it. She's putting all her eggs in the one morning practice. She wasn't having the best swim. And all of our listeners would know this athlete, but I'm gonna, it's going to remain nameless for now. But, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You just got to keep moving forward. Can't get put all your, you know. Put it into the context of life. Within a 30-day period, you've got a whole bunch of sort of basic days. You got some really outstanding days, like you did something special. And then you have some really crappy days where you woke up and you went, okay, this is not the best day. I don't feel real great today. I mean, I've never had a day like that, but maybe most people do. Yeah, and we yeah. need to have another Lubinsky days. <laughs> I like that. A good t-shirt that says that, Lubinsky days. Oh, by the way, when we get all of our merchandise that's that we're going to bring in, we can put all, start putting it back here. Well, yeah. Right? Well, we've got a... By the so, way, this is our uh, 2018 the beach our beach, beach session. Program, so yeah. our beach sessions start next week, next Wednesday, Wednesday mornings, 6 a.m. at Tower 26. Yep. Who would have thought Tower 26 in Santa Monica? So if you're in town, more than welcome to come out. We have athletes from all over Los Angeles, all over the world, showing up for those things. It's become a big thing. How many athletes do we usually have weekly out there? Well, it'll range from 100 to 250. So it's a robust. Uh, training session 6 a.m. right before work and of course visitors are welcome as always the showers at the beach changing areas and uh, yeah it's a great community and we the way we break it up into circuits so it's not just go out and swim for two miles we actually break it up in the circuits you swim with athletes of, of your ability you're not getting left behind it, it makes for a fun you know race like environment. well we take the group the, the, the large group break it up into subgroups based on ability levels similar to uh, you guys that are on our subscription plan you have different levels so we're broken up the same way. There's level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five, actually. And each level has their own specific, uh, you know, course that were that's been pre-designed. Yeah. And those swim courses are designed to be about five minutes to eight minutes in length, typically. Mm -hmm. And then all the ingredients are built in. Race start, takeout speed, siding, churning the buoys. Pace lining. Pace lining. Yep, we get it Lots all in Lots of there. people because, because it's a, a large group. And then yeah. you're running out of the water, transitions. I mean, you get it all. Yeah. So um, so it's fun times. If you're in Santa Monica on Wednesday morning, more than welcome to at 6 a.m. Let's get to the workout of the episode, Jer. Workout is brought to you by coaching.tower26.com. Jer, what are we going to what, What's the workout today? What well, are we going to talk know, about? We did this workout um, earlier this week. And I thought I'd pull this workout because this workout has a number of the ingredients in it that we talked about earlier in the episode here that has endurance training, power, speed, skill building, all the open water skill building uh, elements and so on. So it's a robust workout, mm -hmm. but with sprinklings of all the pieces that go into this phase. So typical stretch cords, and that's... We have a video on, uh, on our YouTube uh, channel that's opened up. So we have about 100 videos on our YouTube ch channel, but unfortunately, only, and I don't know the number, less than 10 are made available to the public. The rest are for our subscribers. And you're also going to find this video podcast on the YouTube channel as well. So this will so end Christoph up on will put it on the YouTube channel. Once, once we finish, complete it, cut it, done, it will be on the YouTube channel as well. Perfect. So... so uh, we have a number of those videos on there, but one of the open videos that's um, 
that's available to the public is the one on uh, stretch cords and how to execute uh, and do the stretch cords properly. So I'd like you guys to take a look at that. And that's how you'd start off each of our sessions, our mm -hmm. workouts. Then we did a warm up, and without all the details, we should just send people to the website so they can see yep. uh, see the workout. Um, but we had two segments of warm up. And for the purpose of time here, let's get into the sec second segment of warm up, which is where we did kicking with fins. And a lot of that kicking was butterfly kicking. And the reason, again, is core work. Core strength, yep. So core strength. So you know, this is another thing I can do on this podcast take my shirt off and show everyone my core strength. Once you check with your wife first, both, both of us could sit here with our shirts off, just like Putin. Uh, maybe 20 years ago. <laughs> the, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Did you see Putin. those? Yeah. Putin. Yeah. All right. So. Sorry. After we've gone through the warm up, we went, went immediately into our main swim set, which was uh, four swims that were about eight minutes or so in duration. And the first one, effort level was low, 70% or so, but we did a lot of siding on a whole bunch of deck ups. So at the beginning and the end of each and every 100 within your prescribed distance. So for our fastest athletes, it was a 600, then a 500, then a 400, whatever the prescribed distance was. We were going to dive in, sight two times per 25. So that's a total of eight sightings in a 100. At the end of each 100, immediately climb out of the pool, turn around, dive back in, sight two times per 25 again. And then we went through that, uh, that pattern for mm -hmm. the entire distance, which took about eight or nine minutes. So that was number one, but it wasn't done at high output. This was just done at 70%. So the main focus is on good mechanics and integrating sighting, a high frequency of sighting. So it's eight times per 100. So if you're doing a 600, that's 48 sites, right? A lot so of whole, sites, yeah. A lot of sighting at that time. And then we took a break. We have about a minute break between each of these. And then we did three more. The first one was what I sort of called basic, you know, endurance, 80% effort, solid state, no bells or whistles to it. There's no sighting. There's no deck ups, nothing else. It's just a continuous swim aerobic. Then after that minute break, after that one, we went into the third one, which then we introduced all the elements you were talking about, Jim, dive in. Uh, and you had partners. So this is where it's important if you can get a partner for yourself. And in our group, we had four or five people in a lane. Mm -hmm. You went the first 100 fast. Okay. And then you're, and once you're going fast, once you're leading off your lane or if you're with your partner, if you're going first, you're siding two times per 25. If you're in the drafting position, you're siding one time per 25. So the leaders are going fast and siding with more frequency. The uh, draftee is going a little bit easier, obviously, and siding one time per 25. And at the end of each and every 100, the leader would pull over and this person in the second place would take the new lead and the former leader would go to the back of the lane. Mm -hmm. So that's how, or the back of the line. Did you say the what the output line. of that leader is going to be putting out? It's 85%, right? Well, in this particular case, it was race takeout effort. Race takeout. 90%, okay. 90 or better. Gotcha. So we had them going fairly fast. And you're in the draft position, so you're just trying to be as managed as you can, longer strokes, more fluid, okay? Yeah. And less uh, sighting frequency. And the one thing you realize that you really realize a fast when somebody's at race takeout speed, you're in the draft, you feel like you're not working, but that person's going, you know, a quick pace. Yes. But you sit there and you realize how beneficial the draft is by practicing this day yeah. in and day out, like we've been doing. So, so we did that for the third one, minute to minute and a half break, and then the last one was the same pattern again, same program, high frequency of sighting if you're leading, less sighting if you're following, but we switched off every fifty. So it's going to be more intensity. It was going to be a higher intensity. Push so overall, big intensity. The workout crowned off at the end and completed with pulling. And we had about a 10, I think it was a, about a 12-minute pull. It ended up being a 1K for level 1 athletes down to 600 for level 4 or 5 athletes. But we put the, the pulling gear on at a much lower output. And the reason we do pulling always, almost always, after sighting is sighting is highly disruptive for most athletes. If you haven't fully developed that skill, uh, most folks are a little clunky at it, mm -hmm. still clumsy. Uh, it's important to go back and make sure you, you integrate really good swimming mechanics. I don't like to swim and swim workouts uh, and swimming in itself is so technical. I don't like to end a workout on bad mechanics and we generally don't have our best mechanics when we're swimming fast and doing sighting. So we finish off the workout with a, about a 10 to 12 minute pull where everything gets realigned because that's what pulling is about for us. It's a good set and it's fun. It goes by actually for how much you get in. It goes by really quick. So go to coaching.tower26.com for more details on that and to get the specifics of the entire set. Let's get to the questions of the episode. Remember, write G-E-R-Y at tower26.com. Another thing we can do is video questions. We can like FaceTime a question and we can get Elizabeth or my wife Megan on there and 
they can yell at us about something, bring milk home tonight or something like that. We get a lot, do a lot of stuff with this We're chair. We're going to be able My to. My mind is rolling this, right now. Christoph has, has taken our program to a whole new level for us. I mean, he's really, thank God, he thank is God. the obsessed thank triathlete. God. So now what we do is get t-shirts with his face on there. I'm all about t-shirts today. Check with Christelle first. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Christelle and Christoph. Christelle and Christoph. That's my warm up. Christelle and Christoph. Christelle and Christoph. They're married, and I don't think they even liked each other. They just think they liked that they had that was the alliteration in their names. You know, every time I see Christelle and Christoph coming to workout, which is typically at our 11 a.m. sessions, they park their car, hold the hands. You know what? They're always laughing. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and they've been married. Yeah, twenty years or something. Twenty They're years, always yeah. laughing. I mean, wow. they have a wonderful, wonderful relationship. Yeah, well, you know what? Thanks to him, and all, all this stuff is because of him. So uh, we owe it to him. But so, Christoph, thank you very much. <laughs> but I will not give him credit when I'm big time in the lights in Hollywood. You know, I'm not going to give him credit. I'm gonna take all the credit myself. Hey, first question is from Michael Rosado. Hey guys, I love the podcast. I'm so glad I somehow discovered it and gone back to the very first first podcast and listened to every minute of every episode in order, and it's been great. Along with the Purple Patch and Trainer Road podcast, I think I'm well on my way of being a great triathlete. I'm 35 years of age and have played sports all my life, and have just completed my first triathlon of triathlon in sprint distances i plan to do a full season again in the sprint series and i would love to consistently be pushing those top five finishes every race i've done a 1k time trial i haven't done the 1k time trial yet but my all-out 100 meter time in a 25 meter pool is about one minute 28 seconds i swam three times per week consistently with each session between being between 1.8 kilometers and 2.3 kilometers i'm definitely interested in signing up for the members membership and following the workouts especially now as my off season begins i would love to start from the start and do everything properly. Can my program be started from the start or do I have no choice but to join in and follow whatever you guys are currently up to? Regards. All right, Michael, uh, thanks for your question. Michael from Australia. Uh, let me make a couple of comments before I answer the question. 1.8 to 2K per session, Michael, that is uh, uh, fairly elementary. Low, right? Yeah. Low, low, low volume. Like, yeah. You would need to increase, and although you have a good frequency at two to three times per week, if you're going to be stepping up and want to have good performances, you need to increase your training volume. That is a very, very low training volume. Regarding your specific question, uh, if you're looking at triathlon as a lifestyle and to build this in for a long duration, several years, it does not matter when you start. If you said, hey, I only have one year and that's all I'm going to do triathlon for, then fine, start during phase one, which is the recovery phase and the technical phase and that typically starts up in November but if your journey is going to be longer and this is built in which is what it should be part of your lifestyle then it does not matter when you join in fact this is the best if there's one phase to join this yeah. is it yeah because I mean everything's scaled to your specific level when you join so if you're a level three swimmer you're gonna get level three workouts so and if you're not in great shape let's say you are a level three athlete and you're not in terrific shape at that time so your performances at that time are level four ability, right? Then you'd start with level four. Mm -hmm. And then as you progress, you'd be moved along to level three and level two and so on. Exactly. We've seen plenty of people move up over yeah. the over the years. Well, we just did that over the 1K and 100. A number of people got moved up levels. Uh, people moving up and they... Uh they took on the challenge and they're they're responding to it so hey luke smith writes hey jerry and he leaves me out of this one but i guess you know it's just geared towards you much like everyone who listens to your podcast thank you for sharing your knowledge and honest opinion i've just qualified for kona and my coach matt hansen won texas great job matt is putting on a lot of emphasis on my swim so i exit the water in the front of the slower packs i don't have a rich swim background and therefore I have mobility and technique limitations. Could you point me in the right direction of some video to improve this area? I've seen one on YouTube about vertical forearm, but to to improve other reins of motion, strength, and control would be very valuable. Thank you very much. Hey, Luke. Thanks for your question. And uh, and and Matt, I didn't get a chance to meet Matt, but I think Matt was at um, at a conference that i was at recently i think mm. i'm not sure possibly but good dude I that's a good dude certainly know the name and he's been having an outstanding season yeah I mean, this guy's uh... been racing really really well uh luke we just did two podcasts with aaron carson aaron carson he's got the app on there so. so let's drive let's take a look at uh the, the two the two podcasts before mark spitz 
are yep. the interviews with Aaron and Luke. You can go on, listen to those. Uh, Aaron's um, website address is on there, and also her app address. And I would uh, yeah, she opened the app to all of our listeners, so right. that's a cool. And the mobility and strength on there is very beneficial. So start doing that, start integrating that in your plan. You'll be set to go, Luke. And uh, as a reminder, Luke. Early vertical forearm is not important for triathletes. And you can go back and listen to that episode. That's probably yes. in the 20s about our disdain for early, early vertical forearm. It's another t-shirt. No early vertical forearm. Next question. Tor Carmelin. Car- Carmain. Subscri- He's a subscriber, actually. Hey, Jerry and Jim. I've just re- recently started triathlons. And I had no swim background. I started swimming in October of 2017 and could barely get across the pool. I had no coaching and swam about two to three times a week. I dreaded it. My first triathlon was Olympic distance on March 18th, and I managed to finish the swim in, at 224 per 100 meters. Needless to say, it was not a great experiment, experience. I started your program in the middle of April this year. I, was, I signed up for Gulf Coast, ha- Gulf Coast Half Ironman on the 12th of May, and I was very concerned about the swim. Now I swim three days a week, and I see vast improvement. So yesterday was the big event. I was so confident for the swim. I turned out it had turned out to be the best segment of my day. I finished in 39:30, which was which was 205 per hundred split. I felt great and had a great start to the bike. Your program is incredible. Thank you so much. I feel like a different swimmer. And Tor has been he's been really dialed in the training. So it's cool to see that, that yeah. he's seen when he puts the pen to paper. Hey Tor, thank you very very much for actually sending your comments in. Um, this is a massive improvement. I mean, Huge. this is 224 yeah. per 100 meters down to 205. And the 224 is in a pool. So you've got the benefit of calm water, walls, and so on. Then you go to 205, open water. Uh, big, big improvement. So fantastic. Thank you for recognizing us. But Keep up that great work. Yeah. I mean, I see him making a lot more big gains because he made fast gains and he's so dialed in and focused every session. It's exciting to see. So He really, is present. He's present, right? Just like episode 37 talks up no, episode 43 talks about. Go back and listen to that. Next question is from Christina King, who also subscribes to the plan. Hey, Jerry and Jim. She gives me the love on this one, unlike Luke. Just wanted to say thank you for offering your fantastic subscription program and continuing the Tower 26 podcast, and she actually uses a heart emoji in the question. I had great result of Wildflower as a fourth of my age group. What I'm most happy about is the improvement I'm making on the swim. I had a 4017 personal breast best at this distance even though i miss sighted a bit and did some extra yardage i haven't even really gotten the work on my open water skills yet i definitely felt stronger and fresher on the bike and i'm really looking forward to the next segment to work on my sighting and keeping the momentum in the open water i appreciate the time you take with the educational content on all the workouts especially the audio files and video this really helps since i mostly swim on my own i can hear your voice in my head telling me something like no gaps i love showing up to the pool mentally prepared workout in hand it's also amazing how you keep track of so many swimmers through the comments section thanks for the care and attention you give each and every one of us i've made more progress in the last six months than in the last four years combined and if and were it not for your program i would still be frustrated with my slow times and letting the bad wolf tell me i'm a terrible swimmer or i'm too old to improve time to let that go i did listen to the audio files and watch the sighting videos can't wait to see how I progress over the summer months. I've got Ironman Montremblant in August. Which I got Ironman Montremblant in August. Do you? I'm just doing all of them, Jerry. Well, you, Why not? It's a big year for you. I've got to do them all. You know, I mean, maybe I don't have to do them now all now with the video podcast. I don't have to go anywhere. Go to Christoph's house. Christina, thanks very much for your uh, for your comments. And um, Jim, we met Christina. Yeah, we uh, did. Remember? Musician. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Came down and spent yeah. uh, about a week with us. In fact, went to Mike Collins, centered on Mike Collins, who we also had as a guest on our episodes back when and um, to, to go get some technical instruction. And uh, these are big, big improvements. Interesting, I, I, I just highlighted uh, one of the comments you were reading. I've made more progress in the last six months than in the last four years combined, if it were not for our program. So thank you for, for stating that. But here's the important, what I think is even more important. She's not repeating that mantra that mm-hmm. I'm a terrible swimmer any longer. You've made some progress. You've broken through that, that plateau of several years. And now you feel better about yourself. You're, there's a little more, you're more proud, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You want to actually go to the, she has a more positive relationship with swimming and she wants to go to workouts and, and show off, you know, mm-hmm. continue to improve. So this is yeah. wonderful. Just walking around. So 
Thank chest you, Christina. out. Confidence. It's about Christina. David Simpson from Australia. Hey, Jerry, I live in Newsend. I'm planning out to raise Ironman Western Australia in December, so I have six months to train. I'm currently using Matt Dixon's preseason plan from his recent book, and I will transition to his 14-week Ironman plan when it's time. I've listened to all your podcasts and made improvements using your advice, and I would like to become a subscription member. My question is, I swim Tuesday, Thursday, and sometimes Saturday in the afternoon. I want to commit to at least your two A sessions plus the B session, but I'll get the session before I'm due to swim. But will I get the session before I'm due to swim in Australia? Also, will the sessions integrate with Matt Dixon's biking and running sessions? I imagine they would since you seem to have similar thinking. P.S. Tell Jim he's very funny. So that's at least four people, including my mom, who think that I'm funny now. Including his mom, your mom. My mom, yeah. yeah. My mom thinks I'm funny. I don't know who the other two are. But, okay, Dave, I appreciate that. Well, that's your I don't mom, hear that very often. Your mom, so. your wife. And me? Maybe. No, Megan does not think I'm funny. There's yeah. two other people that we that wrote in. No, she doesn't think I'm funny. Oh, wow. She doesn't never laughs at me or anything. Very, yeah. She just says, "Get out of here, get out of my face." Hey, I appreciate that comment though, Dave. David, thanks for uh, thanks for your comments and your questions. Um, so Matt and I have a long-standing uh, professional relationship and a good friendship. We've known each other for many years. Uh, many of Matt's uh, his uh, philosophy anchors are, are aligned with what we do at Tower Twenty Six. In fact. A number of Matt's athletes from Purple Patch are on our uh, plan already that he has sent over for various reasons. So there is an alignment that I don't think would be a problem. And w- but however, you would want to ch- uh, check with Matt first, as I do yep. always tell our subscribers to talk to their coaches. Some coaches are um, in favor of being on our plan. Some coaches are not. Matt would be one of them that's typically in favor of uh, mm-hmm. his athletes being mm-hmm. u- using our swim program. And, and part of the reason for that is I coached Matt many years ago when he was a professional triathlete, so he knows about the program, and we've been, you know, good, uh, you know, good have terrific professional relationship. Regarding your question, um, because of uh, the time d- uh, difference between uh, the northern and southern hemisphere, where you guys are. Our workouts are delivered at certain times. Now we have four workouts delivered a week. They're dynamic workouts, so we don't send them out one or two weeks in advance. They're written after the uh, one workout is executed. So I don't pre-plan workouts. And none of this is uh, are canned workouts. So what would happen is you would probably receive the workout on uh, the, the Tuesday morning workout, which is our A workout yeah. gym. By the time I send that out, which is Monday night, it would all already be Tuesday evening in Australia. Mm-hmm. So what you can do is back up a week, right? And do oh, yeah. the workouts of the prior week, which is what we have done from several other subscribers in Australia and New Zealand and so on. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's yeah. how you would do it. That's a common thing. I and mean, we have plenty yeah. of subscribers from Southern Hemisphere over there that um, on that side of things that do that. The exact in fact, thing. even Jesse Moore and Andrew Tilansky run one week behind our current plan. Yeah, so they, they can plan for it. Because he wants to see the workouts and, and make sure they integrate well into uh, how he uh, prescribes um, Andrew's bike and run sessions. Yeah. So, but well, David, do check with Matt. That's your coach. Otherwise, it's like if he doesn't tell Matt, it's like cheating girlfriend, right? We don't want to go there. All right. Hey, let's uh, let's move on to what we're going to talk. Well, thanks for writing in. We're going to move on. We're getting a little long in the yes. tooth with this one. So uh, remember, write in gery at tower twenty six dot com. What are we going to talk about next show, Jer? Well, I think we let's let's take a review on this episode since this is our first time in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. See how I mean, we did. Take an inventory. Amazing reviews. That's for sure. Um, I will take an inventory at least. <laughs> <laughs> And let's make sure that we're ready to actually have guests on. Yeah. I would like to have Karen, see if she's interested in coming on, mm-hmm. and uh, Kazume, uh, yeah. you know, the two ladies we talked about. And if they're available, and if we've done a good enough job at this, then let's see if we can do that. Sounds good. And we will be streaming this on Facebook on our Tower 26 group page, the public group page. And then once it's done, we're doing it live on there, we will upload it to YouTube so it will live in infamy. Infamy. Is that the word? Infamy? Whatever you say, it'll live is. on forever on YouTube, so we can just you can just go back and watch it over and over and over and over and over and over again. But it's been a great one. I love it. I love this new setup, Christophe. Thank you for everything. Tell Christelle thanks for letting us bum around here for a few hours today, and uh, we look forward to the new Tower Twenty Six Video Studios for Jerry Rodriguez, Christophe Palestra. This is Jim Lubinsky saying, "Have a great day." The Tower Twenty Six B Race Radio Podcast.